This is a watch. Told in a cinematic way. Swiss Military by Hanova. How's it going everyone and welcome back to another how to shoot a product video at home using an iPhone. Now I've created a product video of a watch in the past and that video hit over 100,000 views. A lot of you guys got inspired by it and even created one for your own. Now in this video, I'm gonna cover the gear I use, my camera settings for producing high quality video, a behind the scenes on how to create that dramatic lighting effect and a quick editing breakdown of the video. By the end of this tutorial, I'm certain you will be able to create your own product video at home using whatever product you like. All the gear mentioned will be in the video description below, as well as a timestamp if you want to skip or go back to a particular part of the video. All right, let's get started. Let's talk about the gear I use to create this fake watch commercial. Almost everybody nowadays carries a smartphone in their pocket that has the ability to shoot high quality video. And when done correctly, people wouldn't even notice that it was shot on a smartphone. For that reason, I shot the whole thing on my iPhone 11 Pro Max using Filmic Pro, which is the most advanced cinema video camera app out there for smartphones. The reason why I like to use Filmic Pro is because it allows me to have more control over my camera, but we're gonna dive deeper into it later. The next thing you will need is a tripod. I use the basic Amazon tripod that cost $26, very lightweight with adjustable height legs, really great for its price, still impressed by it. Next, you will need a phone mount. The one I got is from Ulanzi that costs around $15. This way I can mount my iPhone to my tripod. The mount has a cold shoe adapter on top that allows me to mount a microphone or a video light. The lights I use are the Ulanzi VL49 that costs $19 and the VGIM R316, which is priced at $89. Both lights were sent to me by Ulanzi to test, so thank you very much. The Ulanzi VL49 is a portable LED and RGB pocket light, which is especially great for vlogging. I might make a separate video using this pocket light for my new gimbal vlogging setup. What? Now I didn't use this light that much in this video. Uh, it would have definitely worked to create those awesome light patterns. So instead I use the VGIM R316, which is a foldable LED and RGB video light. It has a unique design to it with dual LEDs that are connected, which both can be folded. This makes it really great to carry around. What's cool is that with this dual LED system, you can choose to have either one of the panels on or both. You also get built-in light effect modes and similar to the pocket light, the Vigim R316 has a color cycle going from zero to 360 degree that you can use in creative ways. You can also adjust the color temperature. Both lights have built-in batteries that can be recharged. For product shots, I find good video light really valuable. I suggest you have at least one good video light for your product video. What I also used is a black backdrop from Newer that costs $75 with the stand. I placed the backdrop behind the object to create a seamless background. If necessary, you might want to steam iron the background to get rid of any wrinkles. So that's the gear I used for this video. Let me show you how I've set everything up. So for the first scene, I've hung the watch on a boom stand. You don't necessarily need one. There are certainly other ways to mount your watch so that it hangs in the air. I used a thin black thread and made sure that the watch would stay still in the air because you don't want to shoot while your watch is moving. Also make sure to clean your watch to remove unnecessary fingerprints. We want to make it look like it's straight out of the box. After that, I placed my tripod close to the object and centered it in the frame. Next, I darkened the room so I can work with one light. Now let me show you my camera settings for getting the best quality out of my videos. As I've mentioned before, I use Filmic Pro to shoot all of my videos. If you're not familiar with Filmic Pro, I have a bunch of tutorials that you can check out to get started. I will leave a link somewhere up here. But basically with Filmic Pro, you get full manual control for exposure, ISO, shutter speed, focus, and zoom. 
So the first thing I do when opening up Filmic Pro is choosing my camera. I went with the telelens because especially when filming product videos, you want to get those nice close-ups or detailed shots. If you can attach a macro lens, even better. I also like switching between wide angle lens and telelens to get more dynamic shots. For the resolution, I shoot in 4K using the Filmic Extreme codec. 4K has more detail and allows me to crop in in post-production. This way I can also use keyframes to create movements. As for the frame rate, I will be shooting most of it in 25 frames per second. Since I won't be using the audio, I will set it to video only. And because my iPhone is on a tripod, I turned off image stabilization. Next is to set my ISO. I leave it at its lowest so that I won't introduce noise into my image. My shutter speed is set double my frame rate, which is one over 50 of a second. I make sure my shutter speed is locked so that I can only adjust the ISO if I have to. As for my white balance, I've set it to 5,500 Kelvin since the lights I'm using is set to that temperature. I make sure I lock it so that no color shifts will occur during the shoot. My picture profile is set to log, which gives me more flexibility in post to color grade. At last, I set my focus and lock it. On smartphones, you don't get a lot of shallow depth of field because of their fixed aperture. But since I want everything to be in focus anyway, this wasn't an issue. So lighting your subject really depends on the product. I personally think that this watch works well for moodier contrast scenes because of its reflective black metal. So I decided to use more of a focused light so that the audience can focus their attention more on those highlighted details. To create that dramatic effect, I use the foldable light. Uh, I've set the light to 5,500 Kelvin, which represents daylight, and the output is at around 30%. I simply moved the light over the subject from different directions and played around with it to create these uh, interesting reflections on the watch. So I go from complete darkness to highlighting certain parts of the watch. I preferably like to do this slowly because I can always speed up the video during post-production if I want to. Experiment around with it and see what works. I really like the effect where I swung the light behind the watch. It sort of reminded me of Star Wars. Another effect that worked really well was of the watch flashing really quickly. The way how I did this in Filmic Pro is that I've set the camera to time-lapse mode with a shooting interval of one second. So again, I moved the light in different directions to highlight certain areas. In post, I cropped in, added keyframes to add movement, put in some sound effects, and there you have it. For the next scene, I placed my watch on an acrylic black backdrop that I got from Amazon for $18. This backdrop is great for smaller products, uh, creates beautiful reflection and adds depth to the subject. I make sure to clean the surface to remove any dirt or dust particles. I placed the watch in a way that will look appealing and started recording. For my last scene, I took out a pot from the kitchen, filled it with water and used the black backdrop to make the water pitch black. As for the camera settings, I changed the resolution to 1080p so that I could shoot in 240 frames per second. Normally, I would set my shutter speed double my frame rate, but since I wanted no motion blur while dropping the watch, I've set it to around 1 over 940. Now for this shot, I needed a lot of light. So I used the small pocket light with the foldable light at 100% output and also increased the ISO a bit around 100. I then dropped the watch slowly, did that a couple of times until I was satisfied. Moving on to the editing part, I first imported all of the clips from iTunes into a folder on my desktop. I don't recommend airdropping the clips from your iPhone since it takes longer and you could lose quality. In my project, I took the best parts out and rearranged the clip so that it fits with the pace of the music. I personally like to edit in Final Cut Pro X. I went for a more cinematic, tense music and because it's a commercial, I shortened the music to 20 seconds. A big part of it is adding sound effects, which makes a video more professional. By the way, I got all of my music from Artlist. If you sign up now, you'll get two months for free. There will be a link below. By adding some atmosphere, impacts, rises, and whoosh sounds, you can instantly grab your audience's attention and keep them engaged.
So really take the time to layer your sound effects to make your product come more alive. For the voiceover, I used a site called TTS MP3, where you easily can convert your written text into natural sounding voices. I thought this would work great and makes the commercial feel more extraordinary. On both ends of each clip, I added a fade ins and fade outs so that the transition looks more smoother. As I've mentioned previously, also in every shot, I digitally added movement using keyframes. As for the color grade, I added contrast, increased a little bit of the highlights and saturation. For the look, I created an orange and teal look to make it pop more. And to spice up your shot a bit more, you can add a lens flare to your shot to make it even look more epic. In the end, I added a title, which is the brand name of the product, and there you go. As you can see, you don't need a lot of expensive gear to create a high quality video. So hopefully this tutorial was helpful for you guys. Really keep in mind to find ways to make your product look interesting because unlike filming a person, a product doesn't show any emotions and can look boring really quickly. Use this dramatic lighting effect. Uh, you can use any product, see what's laying around at home and start creating your own product video. I would really love to see what you have come up with. Now hit that subscribe button if you haven't. This way I can keep creating these videos for you guys. Follow me on Instagram at Bennett Grazer. And if you want to learn more about mobile filmmaking, here are two videos that you have to watch, which you certainly won't regret. Until then, I wish you a pleasant day. Take care and I will see you in the next video.